Number three is ocular motor. Ocular motor, oculo for the eye, motor to move the eye. Okay, so it's going to supply the bulk of my muscles of um, extraocular eye movement muscles. So as you can see there, it comes down. As it comes through the superior orbital fissure, it then divides. It divides mainly into two branches, a superior branch and an inferior branch. Okay, superior and inferior. And there's a ganglion there, which we'll talk about a little while later, which it also goes to goes through. So let's look again. Where is that superior orbital fissure? A superior orbital fissure. I'll just find that. This is one here. Can you see that? Yep. Okay, that's superior orbital fissure. That's great. Okay, so if I'm going to turn that around now, what you'll see is superior orbital fissure coming out like that. And that's where cranial nerve number three is going to have to go through in order to get to the orbit. There is no other way. Please note that it has to pass through this area here where the um, cavernous science is. So it actually goes through the cavernous science in order to, to get through to the superior orbital fissure. Remember the cavernous sinus, if we look at my other model, sits across here like a porter cabin. So it par parks its big porter cabin across this whole area here anything trying to get into the orbit has to go through it. Okay, So this bit is closed over but this part is opened up to show you some of these nerves actually going through the sinus proper making their way through that superior orbital fissure into the orbit. Okay. So the muscles which are innervated by um, ocular motor are going to be medial rectus which is going to pull the eye inwards, the superior rectus, which is going to pull the eye upwards, the um, inferior oblique muscle, and the inferior rectus muscle. The other muscle which is applied, which is not a muscle of eye movement per se, is the levator palpebra muscle, superioris. So that's on top, and that's going to lift the eyelid up. 